Yeah, all right, I believe it's recording. Ooh, new filter. Uh, yeah, I like this filter for stills, but anyway, doing a video with it. What the hell? Um, put it on the website. Ooh, uh, de de degraded a bit, so I'll make it even more <laughs> whatever. Um, ooh, yeah, walking off. Really having a creepy, um, part of the day. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, man. Ugh. So anyway, it's just so, like, when you have these creepy bits of light, just, you know, where you even have to squint, and there's no sun. <laughs> you know, it's life is just, ugh, gotta squint. It's too hard to live. Um, yeah, Ooh. it's just so obvious just how fucked up it is, and you're just saying, well, how could other people not get it? I mean, you know, it's just so obvious that life is creepy. Uh, yes, it has some little good parts in there, but they're very little parts. I mean, really, <laughs> you know, tiny, tiny little bits that are good. The rest of it's kind of work and difficult and struggly. And, um, you know, people take some kind of pride in, wow, oh, I've got through it. I've accomplished another day. Like, that's good enough. Got to find somewhere to put the sun here. Um, and it's really not, I guess over there is a good place for the sun, um, to get out of it, uh, yeah, so, uh, where was I, uh, yeah, so it's this whole convincing people thing, like the people who just say, well, there's no point in making the argument, because there's no way you're ever going to be able to put a dent in the positive human psychology that's out there promoting the life game and uh yeah i just don't i don't i don't first there's no point in not making the argument obviously it's just making an argument it's not that much work uh i think it is obviously some more work to make the argument well <laughs> you know to clean it up a bit and i haven't done that yet uh, I mean, I'm making efforts, but, uh, you know, I haven't really devoted myself to it, and, because it's just not fun, it's not any fun to have to sit down and think strategy, uh, you don't want to think about how, how do I convince somebody of something, you want to just think about the something, um, it's like you don't want to try too hard, so it takes the fun out of it, kind of like with sex, you know. If you're if you're considering it a job, <laughs> you know you've kind of you've kind of ruined the experience. But if you don't, um, you know, consider it a little bit of an obligation. Uh, yeah, you might not be very good at it for the other person. Um, so anyway, but uh, yeah, so the same thing applies here. In that, uh, ouch! Right in the top of my head. Ugh, my hair is just awful. Gotta fix it again. I thought it was getting better, but it's had a relapse. So, anyway, yeah, little things like that just to, ee, ee. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. I want my hair back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I want a lot of things that I just can't have. It pisses me off, right? Sort of how it works. Anyway, I quit saying that probably. I've been doing that a lot lately. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so we're making this bold argument, and, and we've probably got to make it very well to get away with it. I mean, extremely well. <laughs> you know, and yeah, I'm not doing that yet. So, yeah, I can see that bit of failure. I have to work on that. And, uh, so that's what I will do. Well, or not. Um, so anyway, to get to the point though, and, and this whole idea that you, you know, all it takes is the right, uh, these reminders, you know, the right kind of event, and you get knocked down a few notches, and you start, I mean, it's just, it's so much easier to see when you're knocked, when your momentum is extracted, uh, it gets a little humbling, and, uh, you can see things you can't see when you're caught up in it, when you're right in the teeth of the game. Um, 
and so that's another mechanism here is to get people when they are vulnerable <laughs> you know and and hit them with some kind of meme that'll keep rotating in their head it'll stay there for a while and echo and do its damage on its own do its work uh, inside their brain so they are even when they regain some momentum when they get back caught up in the addiction they'll still have that thing rolling around back there saying remember remember oh it reminds me of the Lion King um, anyway uh, it's the same kind of theme though really right um, it's all just psychology and uh it's the idea is just to migrate psychology from one place to another place. Uh, mine got migrated just by life. I mean, I didn't have a, unfortunately, a mentor or a, a talking head thing <laughs> telling me, uh, oh, Gary, it's okay. Yeah, the whole thing is preposterously silly. Your parents are just a little bit wacky. Uh, they made a boo-boo. And, uh, yeah, you're right, though. Life is stupid. You've got that figured out. And, uh, yeah, we just got to stop these people from keep making it, and we'll be okay. Everything will be, uh, uh, calm and, <laughs> and, uh, safe and harmless. And it'll be good. So, yeah, so it's just getting everybody in that perspective before they make the mistake of, you know, producing the new victims. <sighs> yeah. Oh, it's just so, <laughs> you know, you just saying, oh, God, why do I have to explain this? <sighs> I mean, you know, but that's the context, is that people just don't have enough, they don't get hit enough, some of them, with life, to, uh, to be cautious. And so they're just very bold and reckless and sloppy. And before they know what kind of trouble they're in, they got three kids. And then it's too late. You know, you can't, no point in lamenting, no point in even focusing. Um, I'd also argue, though, that there's no point in denying the mistake. I mean, that's the real problem, is there's a lot of these people that have natold, had kids, and, uh, and now all they're doing is rationalizing. They're just trying to find excuses to make it all okay for themselves. And they're not realizing that, that uh, those rationalizations are just going to be toxic to some brain that needs you to tell them, no, really think about this one, fucker. I believe I may have made a mistake, and I don't wish for you to make the same mistake. Uh, this is a, a messy game we're playing. I played, and uh, you want to be really sure that you philosophically, you intellectually understand what it is you're doing. Uh, you're playing with something else's welfare, and... Uh, it's not safe. It's dangerous. I mean, you know, people need the people who have made the mistake to say they made a mistake. And if their ego is not going to let them do that, well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. It just makes my job more difficult. <sighs> so anyway, sun is coming out now. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a blue sky. I don't know why it was so gloomy before. <sighs> anyway, it did suit my mood. I think the sun will annoy me. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, that's all I can... I can just make noises. Just these horrid noises of fed upness, fatigue, fear, uh, aversion, reversion, conversion, and what else? Some other kind of word. Um, 
there you go. So anyway, so, so that's all there is. There's this, and so then we're back to like sort of the effortless argument that there's this simple description of our reality and people will, it's just getting people migrated to it. It's just getting people to concede the pretty simple dynamic and that there's really nothing to uh, do here. I mean, there's, there, there's this, the, the perception of value is completely a mental artifact. I mean, a, a, a brain, I, I, the, I mean, I make this a point over and over, but when you want something, want is not a, like a desperate need. A want is not a need. And then, uh, they're very different things. I mean, you, if you have pain, you need relief. Uh, when you want something like, oh, everybody to live happily ever after, are there to be humans on planet Earth 10,000 years from now, or you have some daydream or whatever about some sort of, you know, great future for the human race, just concede it's a dream. It's not a reality. It's not really practical. Um, and give it up. And recognize that it's not worth the risk of the real harm that's uh, made possible. The real pain that will be experienced for it. And that, that merely that perception that it would be nice if the Cubs won the World Series. We'll just give it up. And just say, it's okay. They don't have to win the World Series. It won't help or anything. It won't mean anything except to the people who need it. So if they stop needing it, it won't exist as something that has to happen. And so may your need, you people who, you know, have a, have a, have a worry for the human race in terms of its further existence, who are mortified by the idea that the planet Earth ceased to function as a life engine, um, that's just a, your little fear in your little mind. And it can be turned off by a thought. All you do is change your thoughts. And all of a sudden you'll see that that doesn't mean anything. Just like any kind of... Uh, any, any, anything you're caught up in that's a, an addiction to a, a story or a, a soap opera and you need to see what happens. Well, that need can go away very quickly if you just use a couple of mental tricks and it's gone. I mean, unlike a broken leg, those kind of desires can be eradicated by your own thought process by coming up with some understanding that creates a context inside your brain that makes you realize it's trivial and silly and stupid and unnecessary. Uh, it doesn't have any real meaning. You can distract your brain into thinking about something more important or finding value someplace else. Finding some other a uh, metaphorical lollipop to lick. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. And so, I guess that's part of this argument is, um, it's this, this defensive position where it is a, a battle between, uh, the needs of the suffering and the wants of the Hopeful, if that's the right way to put it. But that's really the conflict. The suffering need relief. They need immunity from further imposition. Uh, and that's a real thing. And this trivial want and desire for, uh, for some people to believe, like, you know, it all has to go on forever and ever, whatever that might be, <laughs> you know, because obviously the universe is going to put an end to it. 
the physical forces are going to consume this little island of complexity. Uh, so why not just concede? The game will be over, and it's kind of meaningless and arbitrary and irrelevant and doesn't mean anything when. The when is kind of unimportant, uh, especially in the context of billions of years of evolution. And the reality that we did not arise to consciousness and find a world suitable to that functionality. The universe is not up to the game isn't up to the player's capacity. Um, you know, I've used the metaphor of tic-tac-toe and we're just too smart for it, but yeah, it's like the game pieces don't match the game board. Uh, there's just no game to play here. Uh, it's uh, stupid. No other word for it. It's cruel. It's dumb. Something smart just can't find good cause in perpetuating it. And that's just the truth. Too bad no one gets it, though. I should be able to get it. It's not that complicated. Uh, but, you know, the fact that God doesn't exist isn't a very complicated truth. I mean, the evidence is glaring, yet people won't let go of that. Uh, but that's because we're, yeah, I mean, I guess you have to switch them, you know, they're, you have to trade them, you know, something for their, they're holding a candy cane, you have to give them something to get the candy cane out of their hand. So you have to keep trading them up, you know, and eventually, Maybe you can get a slide rule in their hand, but it's going to take some work to, uh, you know, make it sweet enough so they don't realize it's not candy anymore. Uh, so anyway, that's probably enough. Eh. Angsty. Well, until the next time and such. So forth and whatnot. Yeah. I don't know what.